authentic leader means being self-aware, true to your word, honest, transparent, and altruistic. We asked leaders in development to share their thoughts on authentic leadership. Um, the person who comes to mind is actually a colleague of mine who has been uh, sp uh, spearheading a work around um, support for Black Lives uh, Matter movement in the U.S., in the United States. Um, she comes from uh, um, for her own place of authenticity, um, her own experiences as a black activist, and she's been done tremendous amount of uh, work uh, on behalf of UAF, uh, my organization, um, Urgent Action Fund, um, to ensure that we are supporting the movement um, and we're providing allyship and we are there when they need us. Um, so uh, to me, she is that kind of authentic leader. Um, and I am always inspired because when we're in the room, even with external stakeholders and there is an uncomfortable conversation, I can see that she's always true to herself and not afraid to put the difficult questions forward. I firmly believe that to be an effective leader, you have to be an authentic leader. I strongly believe that as a leader, you need to be able to articulate your values and then you need to consistently demonstrate to the people that you're working with, with that you're living those values and acting those values every day. Because if you do that, then people begin to trust you. Because when you're a leader, you need to make judgments in situations where it's not clear what you're going to do. And if people trust you and you've consistently demonstrated that you're trustworthy and that, that you're living your values, then people will tend to come with you on the journey, even though they're possibly afraid of where that journey is going to take them. Maybe the example that would be interesting to talk about here um, is some work that we did in Papua New Guinea around a public-private partnership, bringing together one of the big mining and resource companies that was working in a remote area with the local government, with the local um, churches, uh, and persuading them that coming together into a collaboration and a partnership was going to be a way to leave behind more effective and sustainable um, community health programs and health systems than the situation that they had at the time, which was that the, the company had um, really a first-class hospital, first-class health services that served its population. Um, and over the course of a period of time, the government health services had declined. Church health services were stronger than government health services, but weren't strong. And yet there was an enormous kind of economic fulcrum in the middle of this area. So, so we were able to um, persuade both the mining company and the provincial government and the churches somewhat against their will to come together and try and see how we could leverage the strengths of each of the different organisations to build up <coughs> the services to the people of that fairly unserved and remote population. Um, you know, I think the two things there were about being consistent in demonstrating that what we were interested in was the health of the communities in that area. And secondly, that in a sense, we were trying to bring those people together and help them work together because there was an outcome that everyone was interested in. Yes, authenticity is critical to effective leadership. Um, uh, the most recent example I've been involved in is uh, in Brazil where a tailing dam uh, failure that occurred at an operation called Samarco, of which BHP Billiton, the company I currently work for, was and is a, a shareholder of that mine. Um, that tailing dam failure led to the deaths of 19 people, uh, the destruction of 12 villages and significant livelihood impacts on up to 5,000 fishermen and a, a tourist industry. Authentic leadership in that context uh, was displayed, I think, from the highest levels of, of the company, where immediately uh, after news broke of uh, that incident, uh, the chief executive of the company and the leadership team made abundantly clear externally that that the company's response to this situation would be values driven. 
it would do whatever it took to repair uh, the damage that was done and it would do so for however long was needed to do that. That authenticity, that transparency and that values driven approach then created an enabling environment for the staff teams who worked on the ground in Brazil and have been doing so for the last nine or ten months. Um, the messages internally from leadership to those teams consistently have been along the lines of do whatever it takes to make things as right as you can in the context. Um, that has had a, a very significant impact on how literally hundreds of people through the company who've been involved in this response over the last uh, nine months in particular have gone about their daily work because they've seen uh, leadership, very authentic, authentic and values-based leadership from the top and they've modelled their behaviour and the way they've approached this very complex and difficult task on that, that leadership direction from the top. Yes, uh, I can use a very recent example in Nigeria. Um, the current administration, the Buhari administration, recently launched a campaign called Change Begins With Me. And the whole idea is to kickstart a revolution of sorts, of values and morals. The current government slogan as they came into office was change. They wanted to change the way things were done. They wanted to change Nigeria. And people bought into it, which is why people voted for them. But in launching this campaign, what was missing is, what I've identified is this authenticity. So it was launched a few weeks ago to lots of controversy. First of all, many Nigerians disliked the tag, change begins with me. They saw it as an abdication of the government's responsibility to do what it promised to do, which was over a year ago, promised to change Nigeria for the better. And so people said, no, change doesn't begin with me, it begins with you, like you are the government, you are the ones who campaigned on change, and we want you to show change first before you start asking us to change. And the reason why it was very easy for people to dismiss this campaign was because the leaders of this government haven't been authentic. So they came in a lot of campaign promises, one easy one to remember, saying that the presidential fleet, which is about 17, 15 planes large, was too big. They campaigned on that. And a year and a half later, they still haven't sold parts of that fleet as they promised to do. So therein lies the lack of authenticity. It was, it's literally a case of do as I say, not do as I do. So these are people who are saying that change begins with me, but haven't shown any change in the way that they've lived their lives. They campaigned on corruption, but there's lots of allegations of corruption against this government already. Very small things, you know, um, supposed to be a very thrifty, simple president, but his family, his wives, his daughters, are very ostentatious, they live very lavish lives, and people can see this. So again, comes down to authenticity of the leader and the message. So while the concept of trying to change people's values is useful and needed, in this context, it fell flat because people are not receptive. They said, no, I, you know, I can't take this from somebody who doesn't leave these values, and you can't tell me that change begins with me.